Hi folks, Greg Marchand here. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Instructor-Led Training Program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. This is another technical knowledge for service advisors focused on electrical system basics. First, a disclaimer. Look, I'm only gonna teach you enough to be really, really, really dangerous, mostly dangerous to yourself and some, some components. It's only the basics. It does not provide enough knowledge to work on electrical systems. Don't think it does. Don't try to use this information to, to work on anything. Just use the information to improve your conversations with customers and with technicians so that you can sell more, you can be more confident, and the confidence will, will be present to the customer, okay? Big caution, big warning, beware, electricity is bad. Electricity does a lot of good things for us, but it's inherently dangerous. Only qualified individuals should work on electrical systems, and this program does not make anybody qualified to work on electrical systems. At the very least, you can destroy a part. At the very worst, you can die. All right, yeah, I know I'm exaggerating, but you can. All right, we got a lot of hybrids out there and a lot of electric vehicles out there. That's high voltage, we don't want to deal with that stuff. Don't work on electrical systems with this knowledge. This is just knowledge to sell better with. Why electricity? Because it's everywhere, that's why. Because you got hybrid cars coming into the shop, you got electric cars that are gonna be coming into the shop. They still have tires, they still have wheel bearings, they still have stuff you gotta do to them. All right, you know, they don't have oil changes anymore, but you're gonna be seeing these things, you're gonna be dealing with them. Every single automobile on the road has electricity in it. It does all kinds of really, really cool stuff for us. All right, and so a basic understanding is gonna help you have those conversations with customers that's gonna instill into them the confidence that you have in yourself, and they're gonna say yes more often, and you're gonna grow your revenues. What's electricity? We're gonna keep it really, really, really simple. It's an energy form. Well, duh, Greg. Look, it's the movement of electrons from one atom to another, if you really wanna know. All right, so when these little things called electrons move from one place to another, it is electron, electrical flow, I should say. It's used to create movement, heat, light, calculations, and we use electricity to do stuff for us, right? It runs our computers, it, it generates heat for us, it gives us light, it, it makes our calculators work, all right? Electricity is an energy that does stuff for us, and when it stops doing stuff for us, we need to figure out why. Electrical theory says that there is alternating current, so the waveform is like this, and then there's direct current. It's either on or it's off, okay? AC, DC. AC, think of what comes out the wall in your house or your office. Direct current is what's in most automobiles. Can you have both in an automobile? Yes, you can. Let's not go any deeper than that. Think of this relationship. I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe these relationships in just a second, all right? Maybe I should have reordered these slides a little bit, but if electricity is the movement of electrons and we have a whole bunch of electrons moving, that's called current. It's like the current in a river, if you will. The rock that's in the river gets in the way of the current flowing. Well, in automobile electronics, the rock in the river is resistance, all right? It could be, it could be corrosion, it could be a broken wire, it could be a whole bunch of things, all right? So if resistance is high, the current has to slow down. It's a barrier. If resistance is low, current goes really, really high. All right, now, more on these terms. Short circuits. We always love to throw that term out there. Short circuits are actually relatively uncommon. It means the electricity goes directly to ground. It means there is no resistance to current flow. And when there's no resistance to current flow, current will flow as much as it wants to, as much as it has available. By the way, what's the source of these electrons in an automobile? The battery, that's right. So if the battery has billions and billions and billions of electrons in it, and we have no resistance to those electrons going somewhere, we essentially have a short circuit, all right? There's no resistance in it. There's nothing to do some work. Resistance does work for us. So short circuits, no resistance, it's gonna blow fuses up gonna blow fuses up. It's rare, but like, eh, they happen. Short circuits cause fuses to blow, they cause circuit breakers to pop. They, in that sense, they cause things not to work. An open circuit is much more common. It means the circuit was essentially cut or open. We have no path for that, that current to get to wherever it needs to get to, and so nothing can happen. 
Because for something to work, for a light bulb to light up, for a motor to, to motor, for, for a heater to heat, we need flow. We need current flow through it. And every one of those things is a resistance. And without those things in there, we'll blow up fuses or circuit breakers. But as long as those things are in there and current can flow through them, they're going to work most of the time. Right? So short circuits, they're bad. They cause things to blow. Open circuits, much more common. They're still bad, but we have a, we have a, a break, in the, a, a break in, the, in the wire, if you will. A break in the circuit. How are we gonna diagnose these things? Technicians use all kinds of stuff. They use voltmeters, they use ohm meters, they use ammeters, they use a combination of those called a DVOM, a digital volt ohm meter. Um, there's, there's, we can measure digital signals, we can measure analog signals, we can measure, measure AC signals. We use oscilloscopes a lot today. Uh, we can even use scan tools sometimes. We can use these things called amp clamps that measure how much current there is. So these are the common tools of electrical diagnosis. We have different types of circuits. We have a series circuit where there's only one path for all that current to flow in. The river can only stay in that river. There's no, no other place it can go. Voltage, which is electrical pressure, by the way, which there's supposed to be a slide in there saying that, but apparently there's not. Voltage is electrical pressure in a series circuit. That voltage gets divided up between the loads based on the resistance. Too technical, we don't need that. Voltage is electrical pressure. Without voltage, nothing's going to flow. We need the push to make it flow. Current, which is how many electrons are flowing in a series circuit, it's the same everywhere. Yeah, it's one river with one path. The water that's in the river is the water that's in the river. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna split up. So we have the same amount of current in a series circuit, everywhere in the series circuit. Here's an example of a series circuit. Oops, the one on the right hand side where that red circle is, we have a break in the wire. That's the open circuit, all right? Current cannot flow through that circuit. There's only one path in a series circuit. Current can't flow through that if we have a broken wire. Parallel circuits, there's multiple paths, multiple rivers. That one river is gonna, gonna form into three branches, if you will. The pressure in all three branches of the river is gonna be the same. So the voltage will be the same everywhere, but the current's going to divide up into each branch. And depending on how much resistance is in each branch, how many rocks are in each branch of the river, if you will, or how much resistance is in each load, each thing doing a job for us. Again, you don't need to know this, but this is just to, just to give you, and you'll wanna come back and review this a little bit, and maybe you'll wanna do some Googling on your own and, and figure out what voltage is and what, what current is, et cetera. When a technician goes to diagnose electrical circuits, they generally will use a six-step diagnostic approach. This is important to know for you, the service advisor, when it comes to selling diagnostics when something isn't working. When, you know, why do we have to diagnose why my dome light's not working? Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna verify the complaint. We're gonna verify that, yeah, hey, the dome light really isn't working. We're gonna figure out if there's something else there that isn't working as well that maybe you didn't notice, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. And then we're gonna, we're gonna kind of put those two things together and kind of analyze where we wanna go based on these observations. And then we're gonna do some testing. We're gonna isolate the problem in step four. We're gonna do some testing with all these fancy tools we laid out a minute ago, the, the DVOM and the, and the oscilloscope and all that. And we're gonna isolate exactly what the problem is. So the, the first few steps, just try to narrow down where in the entire circuit the problem is, and then we can test the circuit to isolate the problem. Once we know where it is, we'll correct it, and then we'll verify our repair. That's the six step diagnostic approach to electrical diagnosis. You might wanna, I mean, you could print that out if you wanted to, right? You could type that out, print that out, and use that at the service counter to create value in your diagnostic sales speech. Now, that step one I mentioned, that's really important for you, the service advisor. That step one in diagnosing electrical concerns is where the, the technician leans on you. They need you to ask questions. They need you to use the customer problem analysis sheet. Remember that? If you don't have one, I'll get you one, all right? There, there is one for available on the, on the uh, servicesalesacademy.com website for download, all right? Get that 
ask the customer some questions so that we can confirm the complaint. When does it happen? At what speeds does it happen? How long has it been happening? When did you first notice it? Is there anything else that you've, you find related to this? Ask these questions even for electrical concerns that seem pretty cut and dry. The more information the customer, I mean the technician has, the better job they're gonna be able to do in terms of diagnosis. And when I say better, it means more accurate diagnosis and faster diagnosis. All right, so use that customer problem analysis sheet. You might also want to ask customers questions about how long after the vehicle started does this does this go on? Uh, did it only occur when you're going over bumps? It, it, you know, was it when it was raining out or when it was sunny out? Uh, was the car, you know, were you driving at 60 miles an hour or just sitting there idling? Was it going left, right, backwards? And I could tell story after story about how these questions helped us find an electrical problem that nobody else could find. And it was by asking questions like this that we gave the technician enough information that he or she could go out there and put the car in the position for it to happen. All right, so, so don't, don't ever underestimate the importance of asking questions no matter how silly they may seem. When things go bad, what's a customer gonna notice? So if, so if electrical systems go bad, what's a customer gonna notice? Uh, something doesn't work, or maybe something only works sometimes. Funny smells, usually not so good smells, like burning smells, that's really bad. Maybe the car won't start, maybe the check engine lights on, all kinds of things, right? Usually this is pretty cut and dry. The customer's gonna come to you and say, yeah, my such and such doesn't work, or my, my blower motor only works on high. All right, an electrical problem, ask some questions. When did this first happen? Is there anything that you can think of that went on around that time? Did you have, you know, is there any work being done on the car, any body work being done on the car, anything change at all before this happened? Ask some questions, even if you think it's pretty cut and dry. The more information a technician has, the better the diagnosis will be, okay? And the faster it will be, which is important to you and the customer. When something breaks, so, so what I'm driving at here is, the, is the, the three C's, the complaint, the cause, correction. So what's the customer gonna notice? That's gonna be their complaint. Something doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Look, there's four possibilities for something electrical not to work. It's the load, it's the thing that's supposed to be working. The light, the motor, the solenoid, the whatever it might be. That thing's not working. It's broken, open, shorted, whatever it might be. It's the source, we have no voltage, we have no current flow, we have the battery's dead. Whatever supplies the electricity, the fuse, the circuit breaker, the relay, the source isn't working. The ground, well ground is where electricity wants to go, it just kind of completes the electrical circuit or the wires that connect all those three. So every circuit has a source load ground and it needs source load ground to work and the wires connect source load ground. So it's one of these four things that isn't working. That would be the cause. So the complaint is such and such isn't working. The cause is source load ground of the wires. The technician will figure out which one of these four things is not working. And then the fix is, hey, we're gonna replace it or we're gonna fix the wire. Examples of these things, loads, bulbs, computers, motors, things like that, source, battery, relay, fuse, like I said, circuit breaker, and then ground. That ground's a wire or a connection or, or you know, some sort of wire to ground connection, something like that. Could even be a, could even be a connector, all right? What you need to understand about electrical problems, now, even if they seem cut and dry, we've got to diagnose what the problem is, okay? If it's my right front headlight bulb is out, it's not gonna require a ton of diagnosis. We're probably gonna check the bulb, confirm that yes, it's burned out and put a new one in. We most likely will not charge for diagnosis for that. But if we check the bulb, because it's easy to check, and we've confirmed that it is not the bulb, now we need to sell diagnosis that six step electrical diagnostic process, we need to sell that because we can't fix what we don't know is wrong. And we don't want to, we don't want to throw parts at it. So we need to sell diagnosis. Go check out the selling diagnosis videos and the understanding diagnosis videos. All right, get more confident in selling diagnosis, selling, the, selling that research, if you will, to figure out what's wrong and then selling the repair. They're two different sales. All right, so we need to diagnose it, we need to figure out what's wrong, and then we can let you know, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, what it's going to take to complete the repair. Electricity makes a lot of things work. You don't have to worry about the voltage and the current and all that business. You don't have to worry about source load ground. Just understand that when electricity 
can't do its job, we need to perform diagnostics. Okay, we need, to, we need to figure out what's wrong, identify the root cause of the problem, and repair that. Okay, hopefully this is a, a 120,000 foot level at uh, look at electricity. I know there's, there's, I could go on for days about electricity. I had a little bit of trouble trying to narrow it down, simplify it, but hopefully it fills in a few gaps. Uh, if not, hey, Uncle Google knows an awful lot about electricity. Uh, you can give me, a, give me a call. I've got a book on electrical basics that I'd be more than happy to send to you. And until we meet again, keep up the great work and never stop learning.